So at 13 months, I was adopted from China and by God's grace into a Christian home. Growing up, I always understood that being a Christian meant that you believed that Jesus Christ, our Savior, died for our sins. I also knew that being raised in a Christian home doesn't mean I'm a Christian. Before I became a Christian, I did what my parents told me to do. I knew right from wrong, and I enjoyed going to church. I supposedly became a Christian at six years old, but as I grew older, I always struggled with the fact that I didn't know if I was truly a Christian. During my first year at youth camp, Mr. Reyes preached about genuine faith and told us what it really looked like to be a Christian. Later on, he asked if you wanted to become a Christian, raise your hand. I wasn't planning to raise my hand, but it was in the air before I even thought about it. When I go to church, I look forward to the worship and message. I don't struggle knowing whether I have placed my faith in Christ because I know I have. I am working on my spiritual walk with God to make it stronger. And Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is my favorite verse as it reminds me that God's love and power is watching over me. Just put it on the ground. No, behind, behind the speaker. encouraged to live in a way that pleased God. I became a Christian when I was in second grade while attending a private Christian school. Every Friday we had chapel. We would sing and the pastor would come in and teach. Every, um, I'm sorry. One day the pastor was speaking about heaven and hell, the only two places where people would go. Um, he explained that if we don't trust Jesus as our Savior, we would go to hell. Additionally, he said that we should get saved as soon as possible because he, we never know when we're going to die. Then he shared a story of a person who dropped down dead as a result of a heart attack. The thought of suddenly dying and hell freaked me out. I didn't fully comprehend the material he taught and what I had been taught at home connected. So after school, I talked to my older sister, Anna O'Callaghan, and asked her to explain the gospel to me and how it all connected. We prayed together and I trusted Jesus' death as paying the penalty for my sins. As I've grown older, my knowledge and gratitude for the gospel have, have grown. And I wanted to live for God like my parents and two older siblings. Uh, my parents' faith have become my own. Even though I don't feel like I can point a big before and after contrast, I actually can. From birth till second grade, I lived a life that was hell-bound unless God saved me. And now I live a life that is heaven-bound. your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Alright, well, my name is John, I'm 16 years old, so I've been going to church for 16 years, and for 15 years, I went to church, listened to sermons, Heard pastors preached, went to youth camps, and uh, I wasn't a Christian. I didn't care. I lived my life indifferent to God. I lived as a sinner that deserves to be damned to hell. I lived and did what I wanted to do because it's what I wanted to do. I didn't care what my parents thought. I didn't care what God thought. I was indifferent and a sinner against the gospel. But uh, in, what was it, June, or actually July of 2015, on the E-team that our church held, when we went to the boardwalk to do evangelism, um, during one of the conversations, our first conversations, we were talking to this man whose life was just turned upside down. There was just something in my head that just clicked, and I felt the Lord calling me to be saved. And that night is the night that I gave my life to the Lord. And the before and after picture, I can tell you, is black to white. I, 
like that night went from life or from death to life. I like I can tell you now how damned I was and how big of a sinner I was and how indifferent to the gospel I was and how now I live for Christ. Because of your profession and faith in Jesus Christ, it's my joy to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Growing up in a Christian home, God was someone I learned about at church and in school, but he was never anything more than a vague figure, powerful enough for me to trust in and scary enough to keep me out of trouble. I never realized how little I actually trusted God until my parents separated when I was still in junior high. That's when I ultimately had to face God and my faith in our relationship. I went to my first youth camp that summer and felt God's love and presence like I never had before, yet I ignored God's calling. The next year I was hoping to have the same experience, but I ended up leaving that year discouraged and perplexed, wondering why God felt like such a distant figure in my life and why I still wasn't saved. Only weeks later, God revealed himself to me one morning by showing me through his word and prayer that I didn't need to wait for something like youth camp to choose to repent and live my life for God. He calls people to him every minute of every day, and trying to choose them among myself is undermining the saving power that God's alone. Through that revelation, he saved me, and I placed my trust in him. After that, I began to have a deep personal relationship with him as I strived to live a life that honored him, and God's word began to mean so much more to me. I still struggle daily to glorify God, but because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, I don't fear, for I know there's nothing on earth too big for him, and I have assurance of where I will spend eternity. I've been putting off being baptized because the idea of standing in front of hundreds of people never sounded too appealing. But God doesn't call us to hide beyond our faith, but to stand tall in it. So today I'm being baptized to display my faith and trust in God. John 16.33 says, For I have said these things to you to give you peace. For in the world you have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. This verse is a reminder that we don't have to fear trials on this earth, for God has already overcome every one of them, and we can live in that assurance. Of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Ken Young, and I'm 13 years old. Um, so I grew up in a Christian home and learned all about God. But when I went to youth camp last year and heard Mr. Wolf's message about when he was my age and had an uh uh-oh moment, realizing that he didn't know Jesus personally, I realized that was true for me too. I went forward at youth camp and lots of friends prayed for me. My brother challenged me, my brother Christopher challenged me to begin doing devotions from the Bible, taking notes. A few weeks of doing daily devotions really solidified my faith. I still struggled with guilt and condemnation and sometimes questioned my faith. But I know that Christ died for me, and he's truly there. On vacation a few weeks ago, the church we were visiting spoke on the topic of baptism. This was very convicting, and I wanted to get baptized, but I decided to wait until I was with my home church. My Carnuccio and I were talking about baptism. He also encouraged me to get baptized, saying that being baptized wasn't about being a perfect Christian, because I would always struggle with things. But it was about declaring that Jesus is my Savior. That really helped me. So here I am today, professing my Christianity and my love for Jesus. Because of your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> All right. Hello. Uh, I'm Jake Bogardis. 
Uh, so growing up, I went to church every Sunday. I was around God's Word literally my whole life. Uh, I never really made any church friends, and I didn't enjoy going to church as, as much as I do now. Unfortunately, being exposed to public school and not being too involved with church wasn't the, west, wasn't the best way of living. Uh, as a normal public school kid, I was cursing like there was no tomorrow. I was in sixth grade saying things that still make me cringe today. Uh, I was so focused on girls or video games, I was a completely different kid than everyone at church saw. It wasn't until March 29th, 2013, when I realized I needed a savior. We were at a really well done play at some other church that was about the life of Jesus from birth to resurrection. Seeing Jesus mocked and tortured all just so that and die uh, just for me made me think he did all this just so I can go to heaven. It was the first time I felt convicted of my sin, and I realized that if I died at that moment, I would go to hell. Afterwards, I was so convicted, I felt sick. A pastor came up and did an altar call, and I thought to myself, I don't know who these people are, I'll just get saved at my church. And, he, and then right after that, he said, I know some of you don't go to this church, so you might be nervous. And it was literally just like God spoke right to me. I went right up and accepted Jesus as my Savior. The pastor prayed, and my mom prayed for me too, and that night I accepted Jesus into my heart. Ever since, my sins convicted me, and each time I sin, I notice. I'm more involved at church now, and my friends here I consider family. I still do struggle with cursing and other sins, but no matter what, I know God loves me, and he sent his son so I can see him one day. It's been three years since I've accepted Christ, and over these years I've met some of my best friends and had a lot of spiritual highlights I won't forget. Today I'm getting baptized to probably proclaim that I was lost in sin, but because of God and his grace, I'm born again, and I have no shame in sharing that Jesus is my Savior. Hi, my name is Duncan McClure, and I am very thankful that God saved me when I was very young. My mom was reading a story called Before It's Too Late from the book Tell Me the Story by Max Licato. It, it was about two brothers. Long story short, one got taken home to heaven and the other was left behind. I said to my mom, I don't want to be left behind. My mom talked with me to make sure I understood that I was separated from God forever because of my sin needed to repent from it, seek God's forgiveness, and confess my belief in the fact that Jesus took the punishment of my sin on the cross to rescue me. My mom helped me tell God in prayer. I don't really remember what I was struggling with before conversion, but I remember some pretty serious things after conversion. First of all, I had a serious lying problem. I had many secrets. I was very lazy, and I was all also playing games when I was supposed to be doing my responsibilities. Then after one of Pastor Joshua Gilmore's messages, I was feeling the weight of my struggles and the impact of the sins that I was holding on to. So I decided to surrender my sinful thoughts and actions to the Lord. Having a lot of secrets is terrible because you're always looking over your shoulder and wondering who's watching. It's not a good feeling. I'm so grateful that God... That, what? to God that he continues to convict me and rescue me. And rescue me. My name is Dakota McClure, and I was saved when I was almost four years old. 
My parents took me to church every Sunday, so I heard the gospel from the messages, from Sunday school, and from my parents. But I said that I wanted to wait until I was older to put my faith in Christ. But one night I had said that I thought I was a good person, and my mom was talking to me about the gospel again. And it was clear that I understood that God was the creator and that he had made us to glorify him, that sin was disobeying God's law, and that because God is holy, disobeying him meant that he could not be near us, and that we were bound for hell. But because God loved us, he sent his son to die for us, to take the punishment for our sin, and that he rose again after three days, and that everyone who confesses with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believes in their heart that God raised, them, raised him from the dead will be saved. And this time I said that I was ready, so I prayed and asked Jesus to be my Savior. who don't know me, my name is Ariel. On the outside, my family appeared like any other typical Christian family. However, the inside contained a very different story. While my mother was a Christian and did her best to raise me in the way I should go, my father was constantly tearing down her efforts, despite the fact that he claimed Christianity as well. I was too young to understand what was happening, but I could tell something was very wrong. However, despite the difficult life I lived in, I still considered myself to be a Christian. After 13 years of emotional and spiritual abuse by my father, my parents separated, which caused us a lot of heartache. I started questioning why my family was going through so many difficulties, and why God would even allow my father to abandon and abuse me. Through this time of questioning and my dad's empty example, I began to harden myself towards Christianity. Soon after my father's departure, I became engaged in an unhealthy relationship that pulled me even farther from Christ, and I turned my back on him. I started practicing more deceptive sins by lying to everyone about who I was and what I believed I should live for, but I didn't care anymore. My determination to find a distraction from the pain and loneliness only numbed any remorse, and I ended up running into any immediate escape. However, the temporary solutions I had found through my relationship and the other means soon became consequences that almost crushed me. Suddenly I found myself in a pit of depression and I began to self-harm. It was a dark and frightening time for me, and the ending of my relationship only intensified my anguish. When I realized that I was completely helpless and could do nothing, I finally turned back to God, since I knew he was the only one who could truly cancel my debt. I pleaded with him to pardon my consequences and forgive me, and even if he didn't, I was willing to accept them. Eventually, God answered my prayers and gave me mercy, despite my rebellion against him. Although I sometimes still struggle with, the feeling, with feeling guilt, God always reminds me that I am forgiven and that his love for me, despite my sin, was the very reason he died for me. One of the verses that stuck with me during this time is Luke 7, 47. He who has sinned little is forgiven little, but he who has sinned much is forgiven much. It reinforced the fact that God had forgiven every sin I had ever committed, will ever commit, completely and fully. It still boggles my mind. I can now see his grace intricately and perfectly interwoven in what could have been such a hopeless situation. Since then, God has drawn me even closer. While each day still remains a struggle, I know I'm on the right path and that God and my loving friends will always be there to guide me. I still haven't healed from the deep scars that remain, but I know God will continue to slowly fix them each day. I look forward to the day when I can be fully healed and can't wait to always remain in the presence of my awesome creator. This is why I want to dedicate my life to Christ and be baptized today.
I'm Luke, for those of you who do not know me. And um, before I was a Christian, I was really just an ordinary kid who really didn't care about God, period. At a young age, my father led me to Christ. I was a Christian, but I never really took it too seriously. Last year was my first year of the youth camp, and for some reason, I was not excited at all. But during the first night of worship, I remember praying that I'd come here for God, not for just hanging out and having fun. And... The last full, in the last full day of youth camp, I remember all those people around me who were starting to get all emotional. I really did not understand why they were getting emotional at all. And, um, and, but the Holy Spirit really started to work in me. And I remember that me and my one friend were just worshiping. And then we just saw one of my other friends. He was down in tears and I had no idea what to do. And so I just kind of followed my friend and... It just really affected me, and um, that day I just remember feeling so free just to cry out to the Lord and just pray, and I just felt so free, and that day I was truly reborn. Before I, before I came to Christ, I thought that I was a Christian and that I was just a good kid who thought that I knew God, but just really just went through the motions of what I thought was likely for Christ. I never really thought deeply about my relationship with God, but a year or two uh, before receiving salvation, I struggled with doubt and had a lot of questions about life and religion and a relationship with Jesus Christ. I thought that maybe God was drawing me to Him and salvation, but it was very hard for me to take to make the decision to receive salvation. Uh, one day, a couple of months before my first youth camp, I decided that I wanted to become a Christian, and after talking with my parents, I decided to accept God's free gift of salvation and surrender to Him despite the lingering doubts that were holding me back. In doing this, I acknowledge that I am a hell-deserving sinner and that God's grace could be saved by believing that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. After I got saved, my relationship with God was a messy one as I drifted and often felt very far away from God and live for myself than for Him. Recently, God has shown me how important it is to live for Him and His glory, and that a life lived for myself is a waste, and how living for Him will ultimately bring the most joy. God has also convicted and revealed my pride, and is humbling me by reminding me the depths of the reality that I am a great sinner that needs a great Savior. Although I drift and often pursue living for myself rather than for God, I know that no matter how far I run, um, will never change how far, how much um, God loves loves me and pursues me, and I know that he will never let me go. Amen. Zach, because of your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.